What's up, everybody? Professor Keith here again. I got 786 Mafia with me. We're going to go a little bit over Bollinger Bands. I haven't made a Bollinger Bands video, and I'm not exactly sure why I didn't make it. I think I did make it somewhere else, and it may have gotten taken from me, and I couldn't get it back. Not positive on that, but uh, either way, let's make a new one. So uh, either way, uh, I want to talk about Bollinger Bands, what they do, how they work, what's the point. So... Bollinger Bands are essentially a, uh, a really simple indicator to help us understand price action. And price action is probably the number one way that most people who have been charting a while do it. They don't even need any indicators. They just look at a chart and they can kind of see what they want to do and what they don't want to do. Okay, So for us, who are not the greatest on earth... And you'd need something else to help you see price action. The Bollinger Bands help out with that pretty well. So um, I'm going to remove the candles here and just leave the Bollinger Bands up. Now, these Bollinger Bands that I have are kind of a custom one. Uh, I have green for good, red for bad. Uh, but you can kind of set them up how you want. If you're looking for them, you just click on Indicators. Uh, type in Bollinger Bands here. And you got all different ones to pick from, okay? The one I have is custom made doesn't matter it's not the point so there's three parts to the Bollinger Bands you got the upper band the lower band and the middle okay pretty simple what do these mean all right well quite simply the Bollinger Bands are a predetermined guesstimate of where the price action is going to work inside and exactly how far it may or may not go okay does that make sense so it's not perfect, but it's a way to help gauge where you think the price will go in a given time. Now, is it always that way? No, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's start with the sizing of the Bollinger Bands. So that's my number one thing that I go for when I use the Bollinger Bands is the sizing. So there's a couple different ways to do this, but what I'll show you first is wide bands. Okay, you're going to notice right here, in this particular spot that the bands are quite wide. Okay, you've got a long arrow here and a long arrow here from the midline to the top and the midline to the bottom. You've got a pretty wide area. We could use a percentage tool measuring tool here and see that that is like 65-70% uh, worth of price action inside the bands right here, okay? Uh, pretty neat. So what does that mean? Well, in my opinion, from what I've studied on Bollinger Bands, I've been able to use them for a while, when the bands are wider, typically price action tends to slow down and stay inside the bands more frequently. All right, so we'll turn the candles on here for a minute. You see that the price went over the, over the Bollinger Bands, way over the Bollinger Bands, but snapped back into them. And as they stayed inside the Bollinger Bands, you stopped getting tall peaks here you stop getting tall peaks and you just got regular old highs, okay? And nothing breaking anything crazy. The bands got real wide. And as this price moved sideways here, as it moved sideways, the bands got tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, okay? That's good. What that tells us is as the bands get tighter, you're more likely to see some sort of price action. Whether that's up or down, doesn't matter. We can get into more about that also. But the more narrow the bands get, the more likely you're going to have price action, which is really cool. So it kind of gives you a hint that something's going to happen. One way or the other, it's up, for you to it's up to you to figure out which way you think it's going to go. But the point is, it gives you a hint, okay? And now, I just showed you wide bands. Well, right here, look, we had really narrow bands. They're extremely tight in this spot. So much so that we only had 8% worth of movement. Back here it was 72, okay? So clearly pressure on the chart is building. And as this pressure builds, the chart gets more tight, more tight, and bam, we see something happen, okay? And what happens? Well, we lose it to the downside here. And that brings me to my next point, which is the third part of the Bollinger Bands. You had the upper band and the lower band. Well, the third part's the midline, okay? I'll actually take off everything but the midline here so you can see it a little bit more clear. Just using the midline 
if we just use the midline, you see that more often than not, the price action follows near the midline. And this midline is actually a 20 EMA. We don't use it for a 20 EMA, but the point is that's what it is. It's just a, it's just a quick moving line that stays near the price all the time. Now, on top of the midline, you're more likely to go from the top of the midline to the upper band. Under the midline, you're more likely to go from the bottom of the midline to the bottom band. That's not always the case. It's just a simple, quick reference to look at and say, hey, this may happen, this may not happen, okay? It's a simple way for you to look at it. So, if we add in the fact that this thing was under the midline, and as I just said, when we're under the midline, we're more likely to trade to the bottom, what happened? We were under the midline, under the midline, and this thing started to drop. Now, we put our lines back up there. What do we see? The bands got really tight right here. As the bands got really tight, it was under the midline. More downside came in, and it came in really hard. On this particular chart, it kept going and going and going and going down. Okay? Now, another example. Look how tight the bands got right here. Same thing happened. Bands got tight. We were under the midline. More downside. Aha. Here's an example of from the bottom band to the upper band. The likely price action. The price action stayed inside the bands. Damn near perfect on this chart. And kept going sideways and sideways. Sucked, but this is what happened. It hopped up over the midline. So we're more likely to trade to the upside. We had tight bands on the upper side of the bands. On the upper side, they squeezed in again right here and pop. My goodness, what happened? Well, this thing went nuts, didn't it? Didn't it just go nuts? Look how wide the bands got when this price action started taking off, okay? Can we even measure that? That is 750% worth of possible price action. Okay, so when the bands get wide, like I said, you're more likely to move sideways. And what happened here? My goodness, this thing popped up and then jogged sideways. Which side of the midline was it on? It was on the upper side. On the upper side, the bands got tight again, and pop, off it went again, back to the upside again. This chart was warning you, okay? It gave you free warning that something was about to happen. The bands got narrow, it was on the upper side of the bands, and pff, up it went. Okay, use your brain here. This isn't very complicated. That's why I said about the Bollinger Bands. They're fairly simple. Now, the last thing I'll explain about the Bollinger Bands is the price action itself, once it breaks above, or below the bands. Now here, you see it broke above the bands and actually played on top and played on top and played on top. This is the most bullish scenario you can get with Bollinger Bands, okay? Where they hop on top of the band and they ride the upper line. Ride the upper line. And it stays away from the midline. Can't get any more bullish than that. It's a beautiful layout. And you're going to get the same thing to the downside, okay? So be smart about it. When you have one that goes far down, it stays down the lower midline or the lower band line, lower band line, lower band line, and even then bounced up and couldn't break the midline again, stayed down, had more downside ahead, okay? Bollinger Bands are an interesting tool. They're a smart tool. Use them wisely. Again, this is only one indicator. I never just use one indicator. I always add more in. I want to know as much data as I can. Some guys don't like that. I particularly like that. I want to get all the data I can get before I make a decision. Up to you to pick out what you want to do. I'm going to add this video into the instructional video series. I'll probably put it in somewhere around the MACD or whatever because this is a fairly simple indicator uh, and anyone can use it. So um, from me, from the 786 Assassins and the 786 Mafia that have been trolling the chat box over here the entire time I was going and I didn't break stride i kept <laughs> i kept on going thank you for watching continue watching the series of videos if you need anything message me and i'll help you out
Till next video, peace.